Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about Mike Marjama, who was a former catcher for the Seattle Mariners. Mike Marjama also suffered from anorexia. I'll be using his story to talk about males with eating disorders. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to check out my free resources below. If you want to speak with me, there is a link in the box. This video is not medical advice. The point of this video is to discuss EDs and recovery. I've made at least one video in the past about men with eating disorders, but I saw this story and I wanted to use it as an example. Not only is Mike Marjama a male, he's also a professional athlete, or at least he was until he retired for various reasons. When people think of an eating disorder, they think of some teenage woman who wants to get really thin. They don't think of a 28 year old professional male athlete. But the truth is, one in three people with an eating disorder are men. As about one in three struggling with an eating disorder is male. So how did Mike Marjama develop this eating disorder? Let's find out. It all began as he wrestled and tried to make weight at Granite Bay High School. He said he wanted to make weight. This means he was playing a sport and he wanted to weigh a certain amount. This is a big problem in weight dependent sports like boxing, wrestling, uh, gymnastics, not so much in baseball, but it happens. I was a normal looking kid for the most part and people were like, oh, you dealt with that? It's also important to note that Marjama looked normal. And just because somebody looks normal doesn't mean they don't have an ED. I would say I look normal, but the things going on inside my head weren't normal. You can't look at somebody and say, he looks normal, he must not have an ED. People with EDs come in all shapes and all sizes. I was gonna have no fat, be really muscular, I was gonna be a man. Mike Marjama also wanted sexual attraction. I thought the only way I was gonna ever get a girlfriend is if I had a six pack. And I think this is something that doesn't get discussed enough. The role of sexual attraction in EDs. I think a lot of women and even men, they try to lose weight, they try to change their physique because they wanna become more sexually attractive. And there's nothing wrong about wanting to be sexually attractive. We all want to be attractive to our opposite sex or preferred sex. We want to attract people in our lives. And how do we do that? By changing our physiques. This is especially true with women because men are looking for petite women. You might say that's unfair, but that's the truth. And women know this, and so they try to change their physique. Men do this too. They know that if they're jacked, and they have six pack abs and they have that V taper and broad shoulders, they're going to get more attention from the ladies. And Marjama, when he was only 13 or 14, realized this. So now I need to eat less and work out more. So what did he do? He ate less. The problem wasn't that he wanted to be sexually attractive. The problem is he took it too far. If I'm gonna do something, I'm all in. Perfectionism is a huge problem in disordered eaters. They want to be perfect. They wanna have that perfect meal plan. They want to have the perfect macros, perfect body, perfect everything. And when they don't meet those standards, all is lost. Marjama's perfectionism helped him on the baseball field because he ended up playing in the major leagues, which is an exceptional accomplishment. But it hurt him in the kitchen because everything had to be so perfect, he forgot how to eat right. Overcoming perfectionism is a huge challenge, and it's something that you must do if you want to recover from an ED. Accepting second best options, not being perfect all the time. It's hard to do, but it's essential. I don't care who you are. Everyone has a body image issue at some point in their life. I don't care who you are. Everyone has a body image issue at some point in their life. I'm glad he said this because it's true. Everybody has a body image issue. Nobody is 100% confident and satisfied with their current body. I don't think anybody is. Maybe somebody at Health at Every Size is. I'm not, nobody I know is. Everybody has imperfections and insecurities. But once you realize that, you can begin to accept those imperfections and quit wasting so much time in imperfection trying to change these small little details about your body that only you notice. And he's right, everybody has body goals. It's okay to have body goals. Everybody wants to change their physique. Everybody has imperfections. Everybody has insecurities. Most people at any one point are trying to lose weight. They're trying to diet. They're trying to change something they don't like about their bodies. We're on this futile quest for the perfect body. Well, teenage boys are no different. Wrecking your life, wrecking your health, to change one little aspect or feature of your body isn't worth it. And I sit down and put like two like baby carrots and like three almonds on my plate. 
Marjama starved himself in front of other people. Even I didn't do this. I would just be super clean. What a lot of anorexics and disordered eaters do is they save up. They know they have a social event and they want to look normal. They want to eat normally in front of other people so they won't eat during the day. And then they'll pretend like they're eating typical meals in front of other people. But Marjama didn't do that. He only had baby carrots at the kitchen table. This obviously alerted his parents, who ended up sending them to rehab at Kaiser. Uh, six months, I came down here uh, starting three times a week and then came down here two times a week. One sign of an ED is a drastic change in eating habits, sudden and drastic. And every time he told me to eat more food, I would eat less food. He worked with this trainer, but he didn't follow the plan. I remember I worked with a trainer back in the day. This is like the early days. I was like 21, 22. And I didn't do what he wanted me to do because I wanted to be super skinny, super lean. I didn't want to be healthy. I didn't want to have a ton of muscle. I didn't want to gain weight. Even if gaining weight was a healthy thing to do. Even if gaining weight made me look better. I knew that being small and being lean meant faster times. And in my mind, it also meant being healthy, being better than everyone else. I had this holier than thou attitude and it was really crippling. How my recovery started was by straightening some things out in my head. Right, recovery starts in the head. It starts with your beliefs, it starts with your thoughts. If you believe that being super skinny is the healthiest thing to do, you will do things that make you super skinny. If being super skinny is the number one priority in your life, that's what you will pursue. Mike Morjama had all sorts of disabling beliefs. If those beliefs lead you to eat two baby carrots at dinner, something is wrong. Recovery doesn't start with the meal plan, it starts with what you believe. And once you start changing what you believe, you can start changing the way you behave. This hyperfixation on healthy eating, this hyperfixation on weight is really unhealthy. And that's how people develop disordered eating habits. They become so focused on their appearance, they become so focused on that one imperfection, the number on the scale, that they ignore everything else. They ignore school, they ignore work, they ignore relationships, they ignore everything in their life that makes them happy, and they focus on the one thing that doesn't make them happy. Hyperfixating on one problem usually doesn't end well. Notice how he mentions six months of recovery. That's pretty typical for most disordered eaters. That's how long it's going to take. It's going to take six months of work. It's not something that happens in one week or two weeks. In theory, yes, you could change everything in one day, but it, it almost never happens that way. It's really hard to just change the brain in one night. You have a lot of thoughts and beliefs swirling in your head and you can't get rid of those in one day. So I'm really glad that he brought up the six months because that's a typical recovery. For some people, it might be longer. For some people, it might be a little shorter. But six months, that's a good guideline. I didn't want to admit there was anything wrong. You have to admit that something is wrong. In his early days, he didn't admit something was wrong. I didn't admit something was wrong. I thought I was doing the healthy thing. I thought I was um, being really healthy, having this super clean diet, this super restrictive diet. I thought I was healthier than other people, when in fact, they were healthier than I was. The people who were eating uh, fried fish and french fries, they were healthier than I was. I thought I was healthy. I studied nutrition and diet and fitness all the time, and yet I wrecked my health doing it. Admitting something is wrong is the first step, and then you have to take action. In the esophagus, tooth decay, electrolyte abnormality, this can be life-threatening. Those are some pretty nasty effects of eating disorders. If you intervene soon enough, you can avoid all those. The point is, the sooner you correct this, the better. So I'd be focusing on the negative things that I can't have. What most disordered eaters and most, most dieters do is they focus on what they can't have and not on what they can have. Instead of saying, I can't have this and know this, know that, know this, know that, tell yourself what you can have. It's a mindset of abundance versus a mindset of scarcity. If you keep telling yourself, no, 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 eventually you'll give in. Focus on what you can do, focus on what you can have. And then now that he's recovered, he realizes there's so much out there. There's Indian food, there's Thai food, there's Japanese food. There are so many options available now that weren't available before. Now he gets to experience the whole array of cuisine in the world. That's something he couldn't do before. 
When you recover, you have more options, more freedom, and more flexibility. I don't think he's eating a ton of chips and cookies and a bunch of processed food. What he's doing is he is discovering entire cuisines, like ethnic cuisines, that he never knew existed. When you recover, a whole world opens up. If you're not happy with your body and you don't know any better, you, you don't think about the health, what, what's wrong, what might happen to your health. Marjama's problem was that he didn't know the difference between being healthy and changing your physique. You can change your physique and be healthy. You can also change your physique and not be healthy. I think he was deceiving himself. He thought he was doing the right thing. He thought that starving yourself and being really lean was the healthiest thing to do, and that's not true at all. When a lot of people change their diets, they say that I want to be healthy, but they're not being genuine and authentic. What they really want to do is be thin, be small. Just be honest about what your intentions are before you start the diet. But I now use it in more healthy, positive outlets. Now, Marjama channels that energy in the right way. He's very dedicated, he's persistent, and he's a perfectionist. Those are good attributes most of the time, but those are attributes that can be misdirected. Now he uses that perfectionism for healthy things. Being a perfectionist about surgery, being a perfectionist about a rocket launch is a good thing. Being a perfectionist about what you eat is not a good thing. Learn to know when to be a perfectionist and when not to be. Know when to quit and know when not to quit. Know what to focus on and know what not to focus on. Concluding remarks. I'm really glad that he made this short movie. Male athletes with eating disorders are like gay male athletes 20 or 30 years ago. There were gay male athletes, but we didn't know about it because nobody wanted to talk about it. I imagine there are a lot of male athletes with some sort of eating disorder, especially in weight dependent sports. But the truth is every sport is weight dependent and most sports require men to be at a certain body fat percentage. It's hard to believe that Mike Marjama is the only male professional athlete with an ED. Those insane standards probably lead a lot of other athletes to adopt disordered behaviors. Because mm -hmm. it's emasculating. Admitting that you have an ED is not emasculating at all. It's just acknowledging that you have a problem. It's not just teenage women who are getting EDs. It's everybody in society. While a teenage woman might be more predisposed to develop an ED, it can affect anybody. Hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my resources below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.